poorly adjusted front rows are really annoying. They're noisy, you might struggle to change gear. When you do manage to change gear, you might end up with a chain coming off entirely anyway. Sorting it is simple when you know, but baffling when you don't. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to adjust them, but specifically with SRAM your front derailers because they're slightly different to other types in that the front of the cage moves more than the back of the cage. And what that means to you and me is that we don't have to trim the position of the derailleur whilst we ride because you don't get any chain rub despite your gear combinations. For the job, we are gonna need the four millimeter Allen key controls the position and angle of the derailleur simply by loosening and then retightening the clamp bolt. And then it also does the cable clamp bolt as well. And the two and a half millimeter adjusts the limit screws. Now these are so called cool because they adjust how far in and out the derailleur can move. So the limits of its movement. Because of the rotation of the cage, the position of the derailleur is really, really important. So we're gonna start our adjustment process by checking it. Now, you'll find that if you wanna move the derailleur around, you're gonna to need to take the cable off it. So simply remove the cable by loosening the cable pinch bolt. And then you can adjust the position of the derailleur by loosening the cable clamp bolt. The first thing we're gonna check is the height of the derailleur. Now, with the chain on the inner ring, you want the outer cage of the derailleur to be about one to two millimeters above the teeth of the big ring. Next, alignment. Now on an ordinary front derailleur, you just line up the outer cage with the outer ring. However, here we need the chain to be on the big ring in order for us to set our alignment correctly. So we're gonna very cleverly use the inner limit screw in order to force the chain into the big ring to allow us to do it. So just simply turn that inner limit screw clockwise We need to get the two white marks on the derailleur, one at the front here and one at the back, to now line up with the teeth on the outer chain ring. So to control that twist on the derailleur, we'll need to loosen the clamp bolt again. But if you need to control how far in or out the cage of the derailleur is, then that is, remember, that inner limit screw there. With those all now lined up, we'll take the opportunity to check the position of the outer limit screw. So remember, this is the one that controls how far out the derailleur can move and is therefore crucial for stopping overshifting and the chain falling off. So all we're gonna do is to tighten that screw clockwise until it bottoms out, and then just loosen it off a fraction. And that should then be in exactly the right position. But we'll check by having the chain in the smallest cog at the cassette in the back, and then just turning the pedals. If there's any rubbing from the derailleur, then you'll know that you need to loosen it off a fraction. It's time to set the cable tension now. So shift into the big ring, and then just very carefully pull the cable finger tight, and then tighten it in the clamp bolt. Now shift back down into your little ring. The derailleur's not gonna move, of course, because that lower limit screw is adjusted in. So now is the time to back it off until the chain drops in to that smallest ring. Now we need to shift into the biggest cog at the back. And then we need to back off that lower limit screw just until the chain stops rubbing on that inside of the derailleur cage. About one millimeter is the gap that we're gonna look for. On paper now, everything should be set up. The derailleur should be aligned and the outer and the inner limit screws should be set up perfectly. But of course, we need to check. So try changing gear from the inner ring to the outer ring. If it doesn't shift, then we're gonna to need to dial in a little bit more cable tension. We can do that using a barrel adjuster, which is potentially somewhere along the outer length of cable. Or if you don't have one, then you're gonna to need to loosen that cable pinch bolt when you're in your little ring pull it tighter before cinching that bolt back down again. Finally, we just need to make sure that there's no rubbing on the derailleur in any of our gear combinations. So check in the big ring and the little ring and everything from the smallest cog at the back to the biggest cog at the back. If there is, then it's time to turn back to your limit screws, turning them just to shade either way and you will be able to fine tune that derailleur position. Remember, with the outer limit screw, if you screw it clockwise, it moves the derailleur inboard, whereas on the inner limit screw, when you turn that clockwise, it pushes the derailleur outboard. Now, 
bear in mind that where those screws are really crucial in stopping the chain from falling off, if you're overzealous with them, you can actually stop it from shifting altogether. So just bear that in mind. To sum up then, set the height of the derailleur above that big chain ring. Then using the inner limit screw, keep the derailleur over the top of that big ring so you can then line up the two white marks on the derailleur. Then you set the outer limit screw whilst it's still in that position and then finally the cable tension. It is a very straightforward process. Now if you want to see how to set up a front derailleur that's not SRAM Yaw, then as I mentioned earlier we do have a video about that. You can get through to it just up there. Or to see how to index a rear derailleur, which is a different process entirely, then you can get through to a video just down there. Finally, before you go to either of those videos, do make sure that you've subscribed to GCN. You can do it by clicking on my perfectly adjusted front derailleur. Oh, look at that!